Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to today's episode of Talking Point. I'm your host, Sayyid Niaz Ahmed. We have in our studios today a distinguished gentleman. He is fellow of the Institute of Hospitality, fellow of the Royal Society of Arts. He was also honored by Her Majesty the Queen. He is known by various names in the media. Lord Curry, Curry Lord, Curry King, Curry Prince, and I believe you have imagined he is none other than Honorable Mr. Inam Ali. Thank you and welcome to the show in Mumbai. Oh, thank you, Nuz Bhai. How so are you nice today? To and I'm I fine. know that it was a very bad weather. You have a lot of things to do with the program Curry Awards coming up on 1st of December. And your mind is all devoted to us that, but still you took time and made time for us. Thank no, you very thank much. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. Thank you. Uh, first things first, I would like to know, I mean, you are an icon of the society. You have achieved a lot. A lot of people would like to know, apart from the recipe of the British curry and what does it mean really British curry, because we understand Asian curry, Bangladeshi curry, and now British curry. Uh, what is the recipe generally of your success, the whole venture? I think I started as a, a restaurateur. That was my first concert. And I realized so many things uh, need to correct and need to be tell the truth. Mm -hmm. uh, one of them, which is my first generation who came right. in this country. And well, you didn't want it to be... Uh, a person involved in the hospitality business. I yes, think your first lawyer yes my family intention was I want to be, become a lawyer. That was really, I mean, every. I mean, Not every, a footballer. No, I was a footballer too, <laughs> but I was a footballer, cricketer. And, um, but it was as an education, which is every family wants their children right. uh, to become a barrister, become a doctor. It's something mm -hmm. our, perhaps in most, cult culture. Most, most Asians. Asian cultural things. And, and that was one of them, I suppose. Yes. And obviously it was maybe um, opportunity and everything together and direct me to this industry as a whole. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, I feel very honored and privileged to be working in the industry and part of the industry. Mm -hmm. And this painful process has been... I understand that you were studying part-time and also yes, working part-time. Working part-time as a waiter and that was mm -hmm, my mm -hmm. first starting point. And then I realized so many things need to correct and change and tell the truth. And my first generation was their strength was, okay, what's the problem? We just do it and because we're going to make money, go back home. So that was the strength. So sacrifice in, in many sense, that was their strength because we are going home. We are right. not going to stay here. Make money, go home. Build, 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 a, build a house, yes. build a market, build a wealth yes. and go back home. Keep so the family there. Yeah. Oh, actually, that was 1970s, early 70s, which is I have witnessed myself. And then I said, no, whatever we do, we have to tell the truth and we have to tell the, you know, and that was really encouraged me for many things. I have made the changes mm -hmm. in the beginning. And I see the response was enormous, enormous from when I see the tin dish was mm -hmm. serving on very, you know, uh, old fashioned way and it remind me to hospitals, remind me to <laughs> prison, remind me to many things where I've seen in my, you know, that, you know, the hospital dish is serving in this, in the tin dish, you know, it was very unusual. So I, I transformed into porcelain mm -hmm. China. Today you go to the restaurant, mm -hmm. you'll hardly mm -hmm. find anything. So the first generation has yes. done such a wonderful thing, which is today, I can assure you, not a single restaurant can run without their prescription. Now, now uh, this always comes to my mind. Why did people go into this kind of business? Why are something like tailoring? Or, or even, even uh, mini cabbing or something like, like grocery? Yes, I think our community has uh, diverse with many businesses. You know, taxi is another one, uh, grocery is another one. It's a huge because community is really large and then you have to be uh, diversified for many businesses, property, solicitors, legal, you, know, you name it, all kind but of. This, this restaurant business is started really only to feed our own people, isn't it? See. No, it wasn't. Yeah, in the beginning, first one, maybe, yes, yes it was only feed on people. And then it's explored slowly mm -hmm. from Portland Square to today's where it is and all right. over the world. And now we become a, in the curry industry as a whole, the whole world is watching right. what we are doing, they can follow. And, you know, curry, I always said, I mean, there's a Times article 
uh, my quote was, curry may be born in India, mm -hmm. but we're making a great in Britain mm -hmm. and, and popularizing Bangladeshi people. That's, so, a, that's, a, that's a good quote. That's we, a good, making it great in Britain. Making it great in Britain. <laughs> and so it's many things I try to correct it in, in a good manner, good sense that this is truth. But I have a great respect for my first generation. Mm -hmm. The first generation when they came in empty-handed, mm -hmm. no knowledge of, there's, there's, there's no chef, there's no, uh, what do you call, um, TV chef or TV cook, no there's no library, else. there's no history, there's no recipe book, <laughs> there's nobody can tell them what to do. So those people, what I have done, I give you one simple thing, okay? The Papadam we serve in yes. this country. Historically, Papadam wasn't served in the hospitality industry in back home or <laughs> India. <laughs> it wasn't there. So it was transformed because of that when my first generation seen English restaurant, they served bread and butter. Yes. They come up with the idea, replacement of a replacement of as a starter as this as, as a first thing after drink you serve papadam yes. mm -hmm. today what we established there's not a single restaurant can run without the papadam so mm -hmm. i salute mm -hmm. my first generation right. who has right. done a, such a wonderful recipe mm -hmm. no single master can deny my first generation mm -hmm. and i feel very proud and that right. is my strength to continue right. the success yeah. of the uh, helping in a many ways so i can able to give my input carrying on the flag uh, this papadam and other, other dishes, see, but as you said that there were no role models, no recipe book, how did it come to their mind? Because, you know, these gentlemen who had started the restaurant, they had not cooked probably a meal for themselves back home, see, because I many think, don't cook. I think, I think the, of course, I think they had um, one thing in their hand in our, perhaps in our, because we know few things, how, how our mom was cooked. Mm -hmm. So everyone have mm -hmm. a basic understanding of the cooking. And mm -hmm. perhaps it's another maybe strength was when the first generation came in, they have to cook themselves. The spirit of survival. Yeah, so they have a kind of four people, five people living together, and they have to start cooking. So there is a, a lot of um, practice, if you know what I mean. <laughs> and I remember those times when people coming in for many reasons for Bangladesh, and the first thing was, um, if you are perhaps not good looking, maybe, uh, you know, and then you go in the kitchen. So there's the qualification to go in the kitchen. If you're really good looking, can't speak word of English, you're in the front. So you know, those kind of, you know, imagine mm -hmm. the restaurant this, environment. This is very illuminated. Illuminated, <laughs> and and then then there's to learn, and the learning learning method was everybody said, oh, okay, you start cook a curry first, <laughs> and the stuff curry was the first thing. I think yeah. it was it is to cook a stuff curry and then see what is the touch. Yes. He has got, and that's the way that he eventually he learned, and he's become a chef. And the chef was perhaps that time was no one knew what is a chef means. You know, it was a, like a blue apron working in the kitchen, and and those are the times I've seen. And and the customer the, uh, glorified Baburchi. Yeah, glorified Baburchi, and and it was it was quite neglected, even though they are doing a fantastic job. As I said, you know, I salute them, and the customer, which is Britain customer, has in many sense, disrespectfully, mm -hmm. when many things, they come to the restaurant mm -hmm. without paying, running away, mm -hmm. and not to paying the bill, ordering the steak and mm -hmm. making a complaint, mm -hmm. half of the steak been eaten and said, oh, this steak is no good. So weakness we had in that time because of our community, we don't know what this steak should be. Mm -hmm. um, and still, from that environment, today we are champion. To come Imagine that it. how we make Britain eating habits is absolutely changed, and we make curry is the first option. Chicken tikka masala is a national dish. What an achievement! Absolutely phenomenal achievement. So for me, you know, I like celebrate. I like to tell the truth. I really want to recognize people who done this. And this whole painful process has so many things to reveal, so many things to share. Well, and that's this is, what I'm trying to do. This industry is worth, I think, more than 10 billion. No. Pound, isn't it? No, this Annual industry, turnover? No, 3.6 billion. 3.6 billion. 3.6 billion pound worth of industry. And if you look at other industry to support, as you said, grocery. Yes. Grocery also depend on the restaurant sector. Right. Media. Our community level, you touch anything, they are depending on restaurant sector. Look at the mosque. Right. We are the donator of many cents. Right. Bigger part of donator of the restaurant. Every corner of the whole country you go to, you'll find one mosque in the city. Who build this? Right. The restauranters get together and right. they have collect money and they build a mosque. Mm -hmm. So that is a huge, religiously, socially, and business-wise, they have done amazing job. And those mm -hmm. credit must be sometimes not forgotten, 
celebrate. Right. Uh, in terms of grading, like, I mean, uh, a good restaurant, uh, a, 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 an average restaurant, an excellent restaurant, I know there are stars mm -hmm. and then Michelin awards this, this NAA awards mm -hmm. that, see. Mm -hmm. uh, I went to uh, a party in a five-star hotel. Uh, uh, it was organized by a big organization, Bangladeshi organization. But the food was supplied by a non-Bangladeshi mm -hmm, mm -hmm. company, see. And my question was, why not a Bangladeshi company or caterer? I was told that uh, these, these hotels have got a list and you have to be on their approved list, see. Correct, absolutely. I was shocked that why aren't we there? I think the catering supply industry is very young. Mm -hmm. We started not long ago, ago, 2005. If you look at all the catering, except few, mm -hmm. after 2005, all of them actually started those catering right. supplying in the hotel. And the people who actually supplying before that, mm -hmm. they are already listed within the hotel. Right. So imagine a hotel has got a list, and he's saying to me, he's saying to you exclusively, I'm bringing 100 events every year, right. and I want the exclusivity for me if you, you cannot take any of my right. competitor. Right. So the hotelier has a commercial decision. They have to remain where they get businesses. Right, you course. cannot give somebody like me or individual say, look, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I want to supply. How many businesses you can give? Right. Two, three? Mm -hmm. is not interested. Mm -hmm. So therefore, there's a, uh, there's a time it will break up. It will break up mm -hmm. when you are good, when you are absolutely fantastic, mm -hmm. then pressure will be done. Right. Um, so th there, there is a potential in the future. You can see, I mean, I've done, uh, you know, I'm regulating with many hotels and many things. Right. But obviously, I've got so much to do. I've done two, three occasions. Well, what you did with the Olympics, that is uh, <laughs> phenomenal, isn't it? Yeah, Olympic was uh, something I feel very proud when people say, uh, even this morning, one of the... TV people saying this is Olympian restaurant. <laughs> For me, it's really a uh, proud moment. Did you win a gold medal? <laughs> <laughs> I got a, they gave me a torch actually. Uh, they didn't get a gold medal, but they, they gave me a torch and they gave me many iconic things to me, signature, <laughs> this <laughs> and that. <laughs> so anyway, I feel the Olympic was, wasn't my dream, it was an impossible task for me. <laughs> and I'm one of the person I always enjoy impossible things. Even when I don't do it, I take it from my experience. But I always like to do something impossible. The curry wasn't in the menu for history of Olympic. Mm -hmm. If you look at the whole history, mm -hmm. there's a no attachment. It's always continental, French yes. menu always was served. Mm -hmm. And there was an opportunity, I remember David Cameron and David Beckham, one came in and celebrated. We are going to be hosting the uh, hosting to the Olympic. It was a really joy. He said every international news, he was true, there. True. For me, I was watching in my sitting room and he said one uh, more. In Ambai, on this very positive point, we have to take a commercial break. Sure. And we will come back, we will definitely talk about... Uh, but then butter. <laughs> 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 you got that. <laughs> okay, thank you for being with us. And when we come back, we have got uh, the gentleman who knows more about bread and butter than I do. <laughs> thank you. Don't go away. আপনারা দেখছেন টকিং পয়েন্ট শো জন্য মাহবুবেন কো অ্যাকাউন্টেন্টস